Hello and welcome to DirectX 11 Tutorial 11. In the last tutorial, we had set up our input assembler to start some 2D rendering. And now we need to set up our vertex shader. We are also going to get into how to have our Visual Studio support syntax highlighting in this tutorial for shaders. First, let's create our vertex shader. We're going to right click on resource files and go to add a new item. We're going to name this vertex shader hlsl shaders should end in hlsl stands for a high level shader language our initial vertex shader is going to be pretty simple it will take in a float 2 because if you remember in our vertex we it contains an xm float 2 so they match up and the semantic for that is position. Now keep in mind we could have named this anything. It doesn't matter. What is important is that back in our input layout that we had created that we had the semantic with the matching name and the matching data type. Since we were only taking in a float 2, when we return it we will return a float 4 and we will just have a 0 for the z value and 1 for the w value which that's not very important right now. This SV position, this is an HLSL uh, syntax thing, and this is just to say that we are going to be returning the position uh, data with the shader. So we want to get some proper syntax highlighting. So if we look up Visual Studio 2017 HLSL syntax highlighting, we will see HLSL tools for Visual Studio, click on that, and then download this. All right, and then we open it. All right, we're going to hit install. And it looks like we have to close out of Visual Studio. So we're going to save that and close it. Now that it's done installing, we have closed that window and reopened our project. And if we go to our shader, you see now we have syntax highlighting. So, for example, it tells us, oh, you know, pose is not declared, so I didn't even realize I had done that. I meant to put in pose here, not pose. So there we go, that fixed that. That shader wouldn't have even compiled. Now, if we want to compile our shader, we would just right-click it and go to compile, but... This should probably fail, and we'll see why. Oh, it succeeded. Well, regardless, if we go to the properties, and we go to the HLSL compiler, usually you should set these. So we are going to set vertex shader, because this is a vertex shader. And we are going to be using shader model 5. And press apply and OK. And if we try to compile this again, all right, succeeded. Let's go ahead and create a header and CPP file for our shaders class. Now we're going to have all of our shader classes just be in the shader header and CPP for now. So we're going to create a new item, header file. We're going to call it shaders. And then we are going to add the CPP file also call it shaders.cpp though. Go to show all files at the top right. We are going to move these two new files up to our graphics folder. Uncheck show all files. And first, let's look at the shaders header. And we're going to do something like this. Now, as you can see, we're including error logger. That's self-explanatory. We are linking to something called D3D compiler, and we are including D3D compiler. This is going to be for loading in our shaders, and then just the DirectX 11 lib, and then the WRL client so that we can use COM pointers. Our vertex shader is going to have an initialize function that takes in the device, and then a path to where our shader is located. We're going to have a function for getting back the vertex shader as a pointer and getting back the vertex shader buffer, which is what we are currently using as a pointer. 
Next we have the shader and then the shader buffer, just declaring them. So let's take a look at the CPP. But actually, before we do that, I need we need to add something to our error logger because of the way that we are logging errors for this. So what we are going to do is we are going to add another function for the error logger that works just like the previous one, but it uses a wide string. Let's create that definition. We are going to basically do what the last one did, but we are going to use a wide string so we won't have to convert that. And yeah, that is just going to be because of how I was logging the errors for the shader CPP. I wanted to include the file path, and the file path was stored as a wide string. So our initialize is going to take in the device, and it's going to take in a wide string to our shader path. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to read that shader bytecode from the file to our blob, which is our shader buffer. So we pass in the you know string to the file, get address of for our shader buffer since we're populating it. If it fails, then you know we have our error lock error that we pop up, fail to load shader, and we print out the path. Next we have our create vertex shader. Now for create vertex shader, the first argument is going to be our pointer to our bytecode. So we're just calling get buffer pointer from our shader buffer, similar to how the input layout reference it. Then after that we have the bytecode length, just like the how the input layout had. So we will call get buffer size from our shader buffer. The next is the D3D linkage, we're not using this, so we'll just set it to null. And then we need to pass in the address of our shader where we want to store this shader. So we're just calling get address of. If that fails, then we are printing out our error message. Otherwise, we're returning true. And then the get functions are just calling get from the shader or buffer. Those are self-explanatory. So let's go up to our graphics header. Scroll up, and we are going to include our shader. And we are going to change this vertex shader buffer to instead be just a vertex shader object. For now, we'll just call it vertex shader. We'll take out the vertex shader buffer in our initialize shaders function. This is, this is where we are going to initialize the vertex shader. We call if, if it fails to initialize. And first we have to pass in the device. And then we have to pass in the path to our shader. So we'll get to that in just a moment. And we will return false. And otherwise, down here, before where we had the vertex shader buffer, we need to call, uh, we need to get the actual buffer from our vertex shader. So we will change that to just calling get buffer and then the getting the buffer pointer from that. Same idea. Same idea for the buffer size, that is. So if we try to run this now, we'll just put in path we should get an error message that we failed to initialize and it should say that it didn't find the file or something like that. So let's just see what we get. All right, failed to load shader path. The system cannot find the file specified. So we need to look at where this shader is being compiled to. So when I compile this, let's go to the directory where our solution is. All right, and if we go up a directory into x64, into debug, you see we have these, ignore the pixel shader one that shouldn't be there, but we have the vertex shader.cso and we just created that. So this is actually our vertex shader. Now there's two ways that we could reference this path. The first easy way is we could say, all right, we are in this folder, 
we can go up a directory and then to x64 and then to debug and then that path. So it looks something like this. The dot dots going up a directory, then to x64, then to, is it cap? No, it's not. Then to debug and then vertex shader dot CSO. And then when we run this this time, I believe we shouldn't get an error. Yeah, we didn't get an error. But the only thing I don't like about this setup is well, what about when we run it in release? Or what about if we are running it not from Visual Studio so we won't have to do this weird path redirecting? Well, there is actually a macro we can use to determine the shader folder path. And the way that this will work is we will have a wide string to store the shader folder. And then if we are run, if a debugger is present, so if we're running it from Visual Studio, then we are going to basically look at all these options for setting the shader folder. And if we're not running it from Visual Studio, we're just going to use that relative path. So it would really just be the blank string. So if we are in debug mode, x64, then you know we go up a folder, go to x64, go to debug. Otherwise, if we're in 32-bit, uh, we go up a folder, we go to debug. In release mode, same idea. Go up x64 release, and then go up folder, go to release. And then in this, we can just do shader folder plus whatever our shader file name is. And then we won't have to worry about you know changing it when we run it in release and debug if we run it standalone, etc. So let's just test this out. All right, and that runs. So if we go back to our source CPP, we can change vertex shader to completed. Next, we will look at setting, I mean, really for the rasterizer, we don't program it. So we're just setting a couple things for the rasterizer. So that takes like two seconds. But the next tutorial, we're mainly going to go over the pixel shader and the output merger is the same idea as a rasterizer. There's not much for us to do there. So we're almost done setting up our rendering pipeline. And then once our rendering pipeline is set up, then we will create our actual buffer of vertices that we will render, which first we will just render a point and then two points and then a line and then a triangle and something like that. One quick thing I want to change before this tutorial ends is you're only going to go into the processing loop if we successfully initialize our engine. So if we get an error, we will not go into the processing loop. All right, and that is all that we are going to cover for this tutorial.